Imagine you just finished building out an application, you deployed it, you have tons of happy users, and everything's going perfectly until bam, you get hit by a lawsuit for thousands of dollars, which absolutely cripples your entire project. And this lawsuit all stems because your website is not accessible to people using a screen reader. This may sound crazy and far-fetched, but it actually happens all the time and happens to companies of all different sizes from brand new startups all the way up to incredibly large companies such as Domino's where this exact thing happened to them and it went all the way to the Supreme Court where they were ruled that the blind man was correct and would be rewarded the damages, which was just a few thousand dollars, which is not a big deal for Domino's, but could cripple your business if you're just starting out. Now the problem with this is not that people are trying to make websites inaccessible on purpose because they hate blind people. It's because it's difficult to make a good accessible website, and that's because the actual tools for learning accessibility, as well as the tools for testing the accessibility of your website, aren't that great and are very conflicting and confusing. So in this video, I'm going to give you all the tools and tricks that you need to be able to get started on your accessibility journey, and also talk about why accessibility is a hard thing to actually solve. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And it may seem weird that I'm starting this video on my blog, but the reason I'm doing that is because the very first article I ever wrote for this blog, back when it was still just a newsletter, was how to actually deal with accessibility specifically for colorblind people. Now there's tons of different accessibility out there. I'm gonna to try to cover as much as I can in this video, but colorblindness is one of the easiest ones to test for. And that's because you can just use something like a simple extension, such as the let's get colorblind extension, which I always have installed in all my browsers, which just allows me to really easily view what my page looks like in different colorblind settings. You'll notice all these icons change color essentially based on what this colorblind setting is. So it's easy for me to see, for example, if using red and green for success and error, it doesn't really make sense for someone that's red, green, colorblind because both of those look exactly the same to them. So testing basic colorblind contrast is one of the easiest things you can do to get started with accessibility. And while we're on the same train of colors, I want to talk about another way you can test colors and that is contrast of colors. It's really important to have a good contrast between your text and whatever is behind that text. This is something that can be difficult to actually visually analyze to see if it has enough contrast because you may have really good vision. So something that is low contrast may look fine to you, but it may be more difficult for someone that has worse vision than you. So a really easy thing you can do is inside of the dev tools for Chrome and pretty much any other browser, if we just inspect an element, I'll bring this over so you can see. You notice if we just look down here at the bottom that there's the section where this color is right here. If I click on this color, you'll notice right here I get this contrast ratio. And this is comparing the color that I have chosen with the actual background color behind it. And if I expand this, you'll notice it gives me two different categories. There's a double A and a triple A category to determine if I'm within that contrast ratio. Generally, if you can be in that triple A contrast, that is ideal, but as long as you're at least double A, that's really good. And that means that the text is going to be relatively easy to see. So this, this text right here, if I were to change the color of this and I'm inside this setting, you'll notice I get these different bands. In between these two bands means I'm between double A and triple A. And then one side of the band will be triple A. So in my case, going lighter is going to give me a more triple A standard where it's easier to read, while going darker is going to give me less contrast so it's harder to read. So you can see over here that this text is incredibly hard to read when it's way down here in this rather dark color, while when it's all the way up here in a very bright color, you can see it's very easy to read. So just visually looking at this contrast ratio and saying, hey, is this a good enough contrast? It looks fine to me, but maybe not for other people. You can come in here and kind of play around with where at in that contrast you want to be to make it look the correct way. Now, the final kind of really simple visual accessibility thing that I want to talk about is going to be testing the overall hierarchy and structure of your application to see if it's relatively easy to see what's going on. So inside of here, you can see that it's relatively easy for me to understand, hey, I got this search section up here, here's an article, here's an article, and if I zoom out a little bit more to a normal zoom, you can kind of see that they're separated from one another. It's relatively easy to see. But if someone has poor eyesight, it may be harder to see these things than for you where you have relatively good eyesight. So again, you can inspect your page, and what you want to do is you want to go essentially to the overall HTML element, the thing that wraps your entire content, and all you want to do is add a single selector to it. So we're going to come in here. We're going to say that we want to filter. I'm going to do a blur filter. And you can just say like one pixel. Or you could say, you know, three pixels. Depending on how blurred you want this to be. Let's just say five pixels in our case. Now if we go back to our site, you're going to notice it's a rather blurry version of our site. And now we can look at that and say, do we still have a hierarchy of how everything works? 
In our case, even with this blurrier style, I can still kind of see, okay, here's an article right here. Scroll down, I have another article here, another article here. I have this headline, there's some smaller text, there's maybe a link with this blue color. It's relatively easy to still see the hierarchy of this page, which is really good for people visually viewing your page. Now, another thing that you can do with the same exact thing is instead of doing a blur, we can change the filter here to grayscale. And now we essentially converted our entire site to black and white. And this is another great way to test your accessibility for your contrast of different colors. Even if you're in an entire grayscale, is it still obvious what everything's doing? In my actual case, it's a little bit difficult for me to tell what my links are. Cause as you can see, this read more link no longer looks like a link. It just looks like some slightly grayed out text similar to this right here. So in my case, it may be a good idea to actually have a underline or some other thing on my link to denote it as a link because right now it's not quite obvious that this is a link. Overall though, I think this does relatively well even at a grayscale and that makes sense because overall the entire site when I refresh is mostly grayscale to begin with anyway. Now these right here are kind of the most basic things you can do with accessibility and these are the things a lot of people already still do. So the next kind of accessibility I want to talk about is going to be more around accessibility for screen readers or people that keyboard navigate or people that maybe have more problems than just a slight vision problem. And some of the best ways to learn about these accessibilities is going to be through two different sites. The first is going to be MDN. MDN is pretty much the best developer documentation out there for the web, and they have an entire section on accessibility, tons of different articles and pages inside of here that can help you get started on some of the best practices related to accessibility. Now, if you want to go super deep and dive into everything accessibility related, then this is going to be the website for you. They have the essentially web content accessibility guidelines, and these guidelines are mega in depth. I mean, if we look at the quick reference here, you can see the quick reference has an incredible amount of content on literally every single thing you would ever want to deal with when it comes to accessibility. Now, this is massive overload for some people. So what you can do is you can start with this accessibility fundamentals overview, which is kind of going to walk you through how you can get started with accessibility. I'm going to have all these different websites linked in the description for you so you can go directly to the website you want. These are great resources to actually start your journey of learning about accessibility. Now, to give you some quick tips about some really easy things you can do to help with accessibility is you want to first make sure that your site makes sense and works with how you tab through things. So instead of using your mouse to navigate through your site, try to navigate through your site entirely using the keyboard and see if it works and if it's not frustrating. So for example, I'll tab here and I'm on this Web Dev Simplified blog. Now I can go to my preferences, as you can see. I can go into the different things in my preferences if I want and go through my search. I have all these different tags that I can tag through. And then I'm just jumping around to my blog. And right here, this is kind of an issue. As you'll notice here, when I have this section down here, let me just get to it. I'm tabbing here and this link and this link both go to the exact same place. So when I'm tabbing through my site, I actually have to go twice to get to each article. I have to click tab twice just to skip an article. That's not really super ideal. So that may be something that I want to look into or work about. Also, this label of read more doesn't really give me any information at all about what this link does. Because if I have a screen reader, it'll just tell me the text, read more. And unless I have the context of what's around that, I don't really know what this read more means. And as a screen reader, it's a little bit hard for me to actually know what this read more button is supposed to do. Because you can imagine all of this content above it isn't here because I don't really see that with a screen reader. I'm just seeing exactly what my actual tab is on. So in my case, I'm just seeing read more. And unless I know contextually that these are the things that came before it, I don't know what this read more link is talking about. Another really important thing is how you actually deal with your headings. So for a quick example, I'll just go to my React sales page here. I'm just going to scroll down a little ways until we get to a section that has some stuff. So as you can see here, we have this heading and then inside of that heading we have multiple different headings so if i actually just inspect my page and look at this heading i'll bring this over for you you'll see that this right here is an h2 now if i inspect the element below it you'll see that that is an h3 and that will be an h3 right here as well so it's really important that you make sure that your headings have the proper hierarchy where you start with an h1 then you go into an h2 then an h3 and then an h4 and so on you're always going deeper and deeper when you need to nest things and that you're not skipping from like h1 to h4 because then you have a bunch of missing headings in between your headings are not meant to be text sizes they're meant to be an overall outline of your entire website for screen readers to use another really important thing is going to be semantic html and that just means using html elements that actually have meaning so we can actually look at an example here if we just make this a little bit easier to read you can see that inside of this section i have an article and this article is inside of a section then we have a main tag here inside here we have a header tag we have anchor tags paragraph tags you'll see that the amount of divs i'm using is relatively little and that's because any time that i have a place where i can use a semantic element by saying hey this is the header for this article 
This article is a particular section on my page. This section represents my entire list. This main element just tells me this is the main content on the entire page. So having all of these different things separated like this is incredibly important because it makes it easier for screen readers to know what's going on because they'll know, hey, this is the main content. Hey, this is an individual article on this section. Hey, this is a paragraph here or the header or an anchor tag. It'll give them extra information. And if you want to see exactly what this looks like, if you're in the Chrome DevTools, you'll notice I have this accessibility button right here. This won't actually show up in your DevTools, but you can search for it by tapping Control Shift P and then searching for accessibility. That's going to give you this accessibility panel down here. And all you need to do is toggle the enable full page accessibility tree. Now this gives you a bunch of information. So whatever element I have selected, it'll tell me a bunch of information down here about what that thing is. But also I can just look at the overall accessibility tree. And this kind of gives me an overview of what this page looks like for someone that's using a screen reader or some other similar device. So I can kind of see exactly what they're seeing on every single section of my page. And it's a great way to make sure that your page looks the correct way for both screen readers as well as visual users. So after you've gone through and you've manually tested your page to make sure that tabbing through things seems to work properly and your entire page can work with tabs, you made sure to look that it's visually accessible and you checked the actual HTML to make sure the HTML is accessible. The next thing to do is actually to test your page for accessibility. Now there's a ton of different paid tools out there that you can use, but one of the easiest and best tools that you can use for free is actually built into the Chrome DevTools again. You can use Lighthouse. And the really nice thing here is in the category section, you can just toggle on accessibility only since that's all we care about. And you can either do a snapshot or just a full page load. And I can just click analyze. And if I just bring this off to the side, it'll do a load of my page. It's going to be running in the background. I'll bring it over once it's done. I just need to make sure that this is front and center on my page in order to actually make it work. Now you see if I bring it back, you can see that it gives me a 100 for the accessibility score. It's saying I passed all these different audits that it's running for everything, as well as certain things that aren't applicable. Now this isn't going to be a perfect test, and that's because there are different things you need to manually check, such as things like I talked about with the tab order, making sure things work with keyboards, and so on. And also there are certain problems with my site that this is not even catching. For example, if I look at these links, this is something I need to fix. You'll notice each one of my links is an H1. And that's not good. In H1, there should only ever be one H1 on your page. That's like the title of your page. Essentially, this link right here that says Web Dev Simplified Blog, this should be an H1, as you can see it is, but it should be the only H1 on my page. All those other headings, they should either be just an H2 or not even a heading at all, depending on what I want to do for organizing my page. Now, another thing you can do on top of the automated testing you're going to get with Lighthouse or any other accessibility based testing tool you want to use is you could use a screen reader yourself because one of the hardest things to actually write and test for is a screen reader compatibility. So you can use a screen reader. One of the most popular ones is JAWS, but that's a paid option. But a lot of your operating systems, for example, Windows, Max, Linux, they're going to have a built in screen reader of their own. It may not be as full featured as something like JAWS, but it's a great place for you to be able to test and see how your site works for someone with a screen reader. And what you can do is you can just test closing your eyes and working through your site with your eyes closed to see if you actually can understand what's going on using that screen reader. Now I've really only just scratched the surface of accessibility, but if you want a little bit more of a deep dive into some of these concepts, I'm gonna have videos linked over here that talk about the different accessibility concepts I've mentioned in this video. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.